Hey, did you know that you could help support our future projects and let everyone know you're a fan of what we do? Check out our print-on-demand store. We have a tab here on YouTube. When you click on it, you can choose from a bunch of different items. We have shirts and posters and coffee mugs. Click on the one you like. When you find the design you want to put on it, choose a color and a size if it's appropriate. And when you purchase these items, a portion goes to help fund our future projects. We really do appreciate your support. You get some cool stuff. When you get that stuff, post pictures here and on other platforms, and we'll hook you up next time you order from our gear website store. Thank you for your support of gunwebsites.com. Occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> One, uh, what are we calling this? A uh, live event that I've been putting off for a while now. I think I scheduled this one middle of last year, maybe even this time last year. And I've been pushing it off because it's not really all that critical. But uh, I'm taking some time today to work on it a little bit. And uh, I think I will for now close this other machine. Close this other computer down. Yeah, I got music in the background. That's courtesy of the duck. It's duck music. Provided by the streaming service. So it's free. Uh, it's like being in an elevator. Consider this live event as if you were in an elevator. Should I make it a little louder? Is it too quiet? I'll make it a little bit louder. All right, so what do we got going on here? We've got the chat itself, but uh, before we dig into it too far, I've got some prints going over here. I'm going to take a moment and jump over and make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, this is what we're printing. A little ring type of thing here. I'll show you that live in a second, but let me take a break here and jump over to the printer, and I'll be right back. wasn't wasting material. I'm going to bring the call this deal webcam over here. Keep our webcam on a stick. There it is. All right. 
So if I get this off of my cord, I think I can reach over here and show you some of the stuff we've been working on. Uh, these 3D patches, yeah, 3D printed patches. We're kind of on a project and discovered these and then made a bunch of them. So these are the one size I've been working on. Get the, these will be up on the store tomorrow. But uh, then I decided, can that be done in the Magnum method? And that's what I've created here. It's a larger Magnum version. For what reason? I don't know. But uh, I've got a print going in one of these in a different color. And I uh, just want to see, or I just wanted to make sure that it was going all right. Uh, let's see. So for some, since I got the camera on, for some re reference here, what's going on with this recoil magazine? Why do I have this out here? Why do I have this guns and ammo magazine from uh, October of, what is this? Is this October? December of 2013. Why do I have this out here for? Why do I have this Newsweek from March of 1981? What's up with this Newsweek from June of 1968? What? And then, of course, this Newsweek from October of 1985. Pretty good year, except for this Newsweek. What's significant about this? This one should be pretty easy. What's significant about this one? If you know, you know. What's significant about this one? Maybe the dates would be an indication. 1968, 1981, 1985. These ain't helping nothing. So we're gonna explore that. And I've got these for reference if you need them to reinforce things, but really just because I had them on the shelf, we gotta bring them over here. We're gonna bring this back up. And you can see that uh, whenever we do a live event, We've got a uh, good port. Let me get this webcam out of my face. Uh, get the good portion of the screen over here is the uh, comments. So feel free to comment. I do this for two reasons live. One, I'm lazy. And if I do it live, then I don't have to make a video and record it and do all that stuff, you know, produce it and all that. Well, let me save this real quick. Makes it sloppy, but that makes it real. And uh, also, it lets people participate. People that want to show up and be part of it can. I'm just saving this real quick as tactical quiz winner. Uh, number two. That was last night, and I'm just now saving the file so I don't lose it. But uh, as we all know, DJ is the winning, is the reigning champion, undefeated. Uh, for two weeks in a row in the tactical quiz now. Where's he at? Is he in here? I think I just seen him. No, I heard somebody alluding to him, maybe. Uh, now just the duck, EJ. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right on. So, uh, yeah, if that's annoying, let me know. Otherwise, I'm moving it on. That way you don't hear this. Because <laughs> I'm breathing out of So this is the thing I was just printing, that big giant green thing I was showing you. It's as big as like a platter or a Detroit-style pizza. Then uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this because I don't need it open anymore. So that's the software you use once you got a digital file to cram it into the, to the printer. Because I've got two different printers. They have different parameters, different doodads or wiggles or whatever. So uh, you use that software to cram it up into the printer. And uh, I needed to get it on the little card so I could jam it over the printer because I'm still doing that process. All right, let me get my bearings here. Like I said, I'm not really prepared for this one. I set this show up when I was trying to do a project last year. And this was a portion, portion of that project. But as I say, nothing in super critical or important. And uh, still not critical or important. But uh, or urgent or anything. But I figured I'd uh, spend some time on it today. I'll mention that we have the tech or the uh, weekly two-way wrap-up coming up. I spent some time updating this this morning, getting it set up to go over to Patreon where we can make it look way better, add pictures and highlight and bold and that kind of stuff. So it actually has formatting, is that the word? So it looks good and you can read it easier. But uh, lots of stuff going on. Of course, got 
concealed carry in Alabama, Ohio, Indiana, and now we're hearing about Georgia being, they're going to sign it next week. And then we still have a couple other states, Nebraska, and what's the other one? Louisiana? I forgot there's another state. I can't even remember now. Minnesota? I don't remember. So uh, we got a couple other states that are still in the running. We've got these three bills that are kind of hanging. Uh, one of them removes um, any AOWs from the NFA. One of them removes sharp barrel rifles from the NFA. And this third one removes sharp barrel shotguns from the NFA. One from Texas, one from Kansas, and one from South Carolina. Um, that's something that's on the radar. Then we've got uh, all the stuff that's been going on throughout the week on YouTube, lots of interesting stuff. And then a whole bunch of stuff happening on YouTube as well, or I mean on Instagram as well. So that's all set. If you want to go check any of that out, feel free. But we're here to check out anti-rights profiteers, the people that exploit this whole situation, the rift in understanding knowledge and uh, make money, make fame and, uh, and probably have or even more ulterior motives that I don't know if it's even important to know all their ulterior motives, but knowing that they have motives, um, we're going to take a look at those folks. So I think the first thing I was planning on doing is setting up a poll. What? Yeah, YouTube gives us this poll feature. So let's go over here and pick some of the worst of the worst, and then we'll let y'all decide who's the worst of the worst. So, so I don't have to type nothing. Let's see if I can drag and drop. Man, I'm gonna go copy and then paste. So who is the worst gun prohibitionist? Question mark. So who are we gonna get in there? Feinstein? Has she done anything or does she just act like it? Shannon Watts? Shan Shan? The big H? I mean the big S. We got Bloomberg. He's an a-hole, right? He's got money. Everybody looks to, loves to hate money. Money's the root of all hatred. Gotta hate money. Don't want any money, because then you'd be hated. So just hate money. Don't want money. Just hate money. We got Clinton. Uh, Sugarman, Dan Gross. Gabby Giffords. She a shill, or is she legit? Ari Freilich. Uh, Dr. Kellerman. Gun ownership is a risk factor in the home. Who are we missing? I gotta be missing people. It doesn't seem like all of them. Um, oh, you know what else? I got at least this. Boom, another resource, gun prohibitionist sayings. So we got the Feinstein. We got Carolyn McCarthy. I don't actually know what it is. I think it's the shoulder thing that goes up, right? We got Patricia Eddington. She's the incendiary device at the tip of it. So she thinks that 50 around 50 BMGs have incendiary projectiles, like always, I guess. Sandy Sheedy, who said you can be shot with an unloaded gun. It's kind of lame, but it's all we had back in 2010. They weren't coming at us with a fever. We got Bloomberg. There's too many things to list about Bloomberg. We got him on the list. We got Jesse Jackson. Is that what Bobby used to say that? Nobody hates Jesse Jackson anymore. People used to hate Jesse Jackson. We got Joe Biden. Jojo. We got uh, Congresswoman Diane DeGette. She's the one that said, I will tell you, these are ammunition. They're bullets. This was in a Colorado, if I remember right, Congress or committee meeting or something. And at the very end of it, she goes, I will tell you, these are ammunition. They're bullets. So the people who have these now, they're going to shoot them. So if you ban them, meaning magazines, in the future, the number of these high-capacity magazines is going to decrease dramatically over time because the bullets will have been shot and there won't be any more available. Right? So that's, that's I'm not going to say anything about 9 millimeter. We're just leaving it there. Congresswoman to get, we got Don Lemon. Uh, I can shoot off a number of rounds. I don't know what that meant. Oh, that's the guy he was trying to get pinned down on what an uh, what an, a full auto and what a semi-auto was. It was actually a pretty bad example, but I put it in there because I, I'm using it for another project. Kevin D. Leon, which is the 30 caliber magazine clip. Uh, he might have said something about ghost guns too. He's weird. 
the weld um governor terry mcclough mcclough something virginia governor who said we lose 93 million americans a day to gun violence 93 million americans a day to gun violence indication that they can say whatever they want and they don't get challenged on it that's a faux pas that's a miss you know miss uh misspoke but uh anybody anyway whatever then we got sheila jackson lee one of my favorites of all time held an ar-15 in my hand which weighed as much as 10 boxes that might be used for moving it's the best one ever i love that one and then uh sergeant what's her face cheryl dorsey who's a sheriff and she was the one who said double barrel magazine extended clips I'm pretty sure she was talking about um, beta mags, but she's a freaking sergeant. She says double barrel magazine extended clips. A lot of it comes back to those magazines I showed up earlier. Words, words that they use because of their brains. They go to school, learn how brains work, and so they use words and they learn how languages work and everything. So they use words. Words are important to them. They're shifting narratives, right? This is long game tactics social manipulation um long term long game so words are important to these folks uh, they went to school to learn what you words to use where uh, they're also going to say things like five speed automatic transmission i don't know if that was the wrong way of saying something but you know what i'm saying they're going to say things wrong all the time because they know how to get people into emotional mode knee-jerk reaction mode and not into long-term strategy mode so let's get back to that and let's figure out who I'm going to put in this poll for now as the worst gun prohibitionists. And let's go over and see with that. Uh, what y'all are saying? Bloomberg, we got that in there. Moms demand nonsense. Who is the fully semi-auto? That's a good one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's uh, written or if that was said. I think it was said though. Sheila's one that's always actually right, always introduced in the most ridiculous spells and breed. She does, and I don't like her, so I'm putting Sheila Jackson Lee in there. I think representatives should have no obligation to be experts, but I think that when they run around proclaiming shit, they should be able to justify their uh, what their status as an expert in the thing that they're spouting off about or at least be able to point to people who are and be confident that they're not being duped because I think they're being duped so we got Clinton in there we got Feinstein I guess I gotta put why don't I got Pelosi in here that's weird hadn't Pelosi said anything dumb I guess not I would think I'd have Pelosi in here I kind of like Pelosi so I didn't put her in here because she's so cool so i guess i don't have pelosi in here you ever heard of nancy pelosi i don't think she's very good for guns i don't know if she's ever said anything oh yeah she has because she had a concealed carry permit or something she said some really gnarly shit before i spell nancy n-a-n-c-y oh look at that first one you find because she's the number one nancy nancy number one what else would you search for so we're going to be searching for her in a minute. We're going to grab her name here. You know what her middle name is? You all know what her middle name is. Do you like her so much? Then who else? What's the last one? Um, um, we're going to pick up one more here. So I guess we're going to go with... I'm going to put Biden in there. Man, Biden sucks so bad. He didn't do anything all that good. So I'm going to put uh, Feinstein. He used to be such a jerk, but uh, he's not done anything lately. None of these others hold up, though. Let me go take a quick look over here again. You know, we got like Reagan and Johnson, of course. But still, like, those are the old days. Uh, Giffords. Oh, you know who I'm going to put in here? I'm going to put in our friend Shan Shan. Because Shan Shan is holding her own as number one. Bad people. All right, so there we go. 
bunch of people who want to exploit and abuse and associate good with the bad in order to obfuscate info and capitalize on that uh, that uh, the gap, m- gap in communication, that misunderstanding. All right, and that's definitely bad, right? That's all kinds of bad. It's one thing to actually be wrong, one thing to actually disagree, but to know that both sides of the situation and mess with them, uh, that's pretty bad. And then the other question becomes, because we're talking about profiteers, where are they making their money? Like, are they gaining off of this or are they just getting famous? Are they just trying to be like jerks for the sake of recruit, uh, crippling a country? Crumbling the institutions? Causing lack of, uh, I don't want to say faith, but lack of um, uh, oh man, I can't think of what I'm looking for. But you know, lack of uh, uh, in the in in the system or whatever. But anyway, so I'm gonna try to talk tight at the same time and they keep going. So what I'm going to do there is we got the poll going, and y'all can vote in that. So far we have four votes. Wow, they're always for Bloomberg. These people hate rich. It's because of the rich. Is it because he's rich? Let me know. Is it just because he's rich, or is it because of what he's done? Sure, he's the puppet master of Shannon. But Shan Shan used to work for Monsanto. She brings some stuff to the table. She's not just a puppet. She's like a cyborg, right? He's manipulating a cyborg who's got its own set of anti-gun two. Anti two AI, see that? See how I went two AI. Anyway, so uh, what we're we gonna do? We're gonna go over here to this page and take a look at some of these folks. So I think the best thing to do is just make a new page because it's easier than messing up everything I already got. Go over here and cover up all of this, and we'll move over here and go with well shannon she'll click she'll go in there let's see now that i'm in oops now that i'm in some good stuff i can navigate a little easier uh lyndon johnson maybe later let's do bloomberg for sure and anybody else we want to put in here let me know but uh i don't think she's got much going on but we'll put her in here too and we'll go over to the prohibitionist side We're definitely gonna put some of these folks in here these paulo titians we should have brought my color over it is the same website after all mccarthy i don't know why not um patricia can hold off bloomberg we already got in there Jesse Jackson. Let's see what. Let's include Jesse Jackson. I'm going to put him under Feinstein, but above Carolyn. This is also the order of how anti-gun they are, by the way. Biden. Hmm. Biden is. Would you say who's more powerful, Biden or Feinstein? I guess Biden has to be more powerful now. But I'm thinking Bloomberg is more powerful than Biden, or is Biden more powerful than Bloomberg? What do you think? What's the one that raises seven million? But when asked what they did, they answered something like in 2015. Oh, you're talking about the one that raised 12, the organization that raised 12 million dollars from the gun community. And then when a uh, famous investigative reporter in the gun community asked them in a live conversation, a live interview where the, where the interviewer was told, ask me anything. And when he was asked, what did they do to earn the $12 million that they brought in last year in 2021? They said that they did something in 2015. So the last thing they even accomplished was a minor thing once in two, seven years ago. That was NAGR, N-A-G-R, uh, the organization that named themselves NAGR at a national level. And yeah, they raised $12 million. I don't get paid by them. And I'm not the face of anybody else. So thanks for responding to our Patreons who make it possible for me to spend time on this. But that's the one that you're thinking of, I think. Uh, Shannon would flip for enough. She's evil. That's interesting. I don't know if, that was, if that's the case or not. 
I'm going to leave you with this trippy music while you consider what we're just talking about here as I go check on my three things. In a weird issue when i print that big thing it leaves like a blister on the print bed so i'm thinking uh it's like i need to clean it like that might be oil from fingers or something or a heat distribution thing i can't imagine where the heat would be in such a weird isolated islands or bubble or like the places where the bubbles are biden now you're saying biden's more powerful than bloomberg I don't know. It depends on how you factor it, I think. Hmm. Sheila Jackson Lee. Is she related to Jesse Jackson? I never even put that two together. Kevin DeLeon. I think he's way down here. He's probably under Shannon for Sarah Brady. I don't even know who Don Lemon is. I don't know who she is. I and Jesse Jackson, Bloomberg, we already got. I don't know who Sandy Sheedy is, and I don't know who she is. And we got her on there. We got her on there. Okay, so that's everybody in this list. Linda Johnson. I guess I'm going to put them on here. I'll put them down at the bottom because they're gone so long. But if we get time, we'll include them in what we're doing here. Clinton, where do you put Clinton on this list? Clinton could probably jump out today and be up here. I'm not going to put president in there. Uh, he could probably jump out and beat the crap out of Feinstein right now. Then I got Watson there. I got, who's Josh Sugarman again? Why does that name sound familiar? This guy made Hershey's. Come on, do I really got to scroll over? Stupid Wikipedia. Sugarman is an American activist for gun controls in the United States. He is executive director and founder of the Violence Policy Center, a nonprofit advocacy and educational organization, and the author of two books. He's written a blog on these issues for the Huffington Post. And then he's done, he's amazing. He sounds like a really good guy. So we're going to put him in there. He's down here like a Shan Shan Chan. I never heard of him though, so I'm gonna put it there. Oh right, look at that. Get that into a thing already. Uh, but who wants to raise money singing your and what's that? I don't know what that means. Oh uh, we got Bloomberg in there, Sarah Brady. I did put her in there. Robin Thomas. Else, the law center. Maybe I should do it like this, like start remembering who these people are. And then I can go gun violence. Dang it, I just lost them. Gun violence policy, whatever. All right, so what happens when you close something? You just go over here, you go to this little bookshelf thing in this browser. All of all our browsers will have this. Go go to history, recently closed tabs, and then Nope, recently closed windows. Anyway, here it is. 
Uh, and then now I can go over and this guy's in Connecticut. Violence policy. Dang it. Violence Policy Center. So that's what I'll do. Now they're. There. All right, so we got Robin. Shannon, we know, is with mothers who are angry about the violence. They're just upset about the violence. I feel like if we all just would listen to them and their then we would get we would be all the better off in the long run. So we got Chan Chan. Got this Josh guy. Violence Policy Center stole one of my pictures one time. I feel like I should give a bunch of money by suing them. All right, then uh there's Dan Gross, Brady campaign. That's a lot easier to figure out. And now this goes down a lot better structure here. See how this is working out? Getting to see what we're doing here. Oh, it's happening over here. Get the Bloomberg money, but do it for like, we need to repeal the NFA. Did you realize that the NFA has a system in place that allows just anybody to get a machine gun or a suppressed firearm? We need to repeal the NFA. And if you can get Bloomberg to finance that, I feel like you're on the right track. So if you can get Bloomberg to repeal one of the worst gun laws that's happened since 1934, if he could repeal that one, think of how safe we would be. And then there that that law that registers machine guns wouldn't exist and we'd be in a much better place oh uh, let's see then we get from the new yorker 1976 i don't own this because you can't get that it's a piece of paper i think or i mean it's a newspaper it's just you know it's all gone This bores me, all this anti-gun shit bores me. In New Yorker, in 1976, the first problem is to slow down the number of handguns being produced and sold. The second problem is to get the handguns registered. The final problem is to make possession of all handguns and all handgun ammunition, except for the military police and licensed security guards, sporting clubs, and gun collectors. Totally illegal. So that was from 1976. Somebody was saying that already. All right, next up in the list of gun control organizations would be Gabby Giffords, Americans for Responsible uh, Solutions, because all they care about is responsibility and solutions, not the violence. Then we got some dude who is Americans for Responsible Solutions, because it's always for this. Oh, that's the same place. I don't care about that. Guy. Then we got the Giffords Law Center. So what's up with that? State Policy Director of the Giffords Law Center. So is the Giffords Law Center something different than Gabby Giffords? Let's go find out. I don't know. Come on. You just highlight it, drag it, and drop it in your browser. Oops. And drag it and drop it in your browser for real. You got a pair. And then, I'm not a biologist or nothing, but then it'll open up. And... Normally, my monitor is wider than this, but I'm using it for you people. So, now I have to jump over to Wikipedia, learn. Giffords Law Center ugh, to Prevent Gun Violence ugh, started in July in 1993, 28 years ago. What? Oh, so they rebranded it to Giffords. That's what we're looking at today, is where all these unscrupulous sons of bitches come from. So, blah, blah, blah. Previously known as the Legal Community Against Violence. The, well, the LCAV. Lack of. Lack of awareness. So, Legal Community Against Violence Awareness is the lack of awareness. And the look of a book. The Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. Because why? Because you need to rebrand every once in a while when you're not making enough money. 
uh, a National Public Interest Law Center, which provides legal assistance to, oh, nice, provides legal assistance to elected officials. I feel like those people deserve more assistance than other people because they've been elected. Also, government attorneys, they also need a lot of legal assistance. And activists like, like who? Maybe Shannon Watts, Josh Sugarman, Robin Thomas, Dan Gross, Gabby Giffords, and their own Ari Frelick. Ugh, so it's a little weird group that started in 93. We'll be taking another look at that as we dig into this. So now we found another one, the Giffords Law Center. Uh, have you ever had a, like a clogged pipe or something and you had like a drain pipe full of poop? Other gross crap, literally. And you had to go down and dig out and that was a pain in the butt because there was a big dead thing down there. You had to dig it out of the way and then we fouled the whole dirt and everything and then he finally got to that pipe and it was leaking a while so all the dirt around there was full of poop and it was gross and you didn't want to just shove that back in the thing so you were taking that and getting rid of it so you're lugging around poop and stuff just before you even get to the pipe once you open it up it's full of poop that's what it feels like working on this so i'm gonna leave this for a second and go change something that looks like we've been going for almost well as long as it takes to print one thing so you go over there and change your printout, and then you all can get yourself something to drink. If you look underneath your chairs, there's free lunch underneath your chairs. We set that up previously with your parents, so uh, just look underneath the chair. Lunch was provided. It's a surprise. You're welcome. All right. So is it better having that creepy elevator music from like a European disco in the 80s? Or is it uh, better to have just silence when I'm checking on those prints? Uh, then we got Lad Everett and the coalition to end or stop gun violence. It's like there's a never-ending amount of organizations to remove rights. Do they tag team it or are they working together? And then we got a researcher who I'm guessing isn't rich but will head of international action that work on small arms international gun bans. In 96 they developed the Australian gun ban. All right so we're putting Rebecca Peters in here also. I'm going to count all of these people kind of together because I don't know who they are. And most of them are all at that same level. They all have haplophobia, a morbid fear of guns. Hmm. All right. So then we got a bunch of just notes that I left in here. All right. So that's actually a good start. Let's see how far we can dig into it. So what we're looking at now is, let's go take a look at the quiz and then we'll take a look at what we're looking at now. I mean, not the quiz, but the uh, poll. Wow, nobody cares about Shan Shan. 
Shan Shan's just walking around doing whatever she wants because nobody thinks she's the worst. Interesting. So nobody thinks that the one motivating moms to demand stuff is the worst. Sheila Jackson Lee, all she does is throw softballs. Same old softballs all the time. She's like at the driving range throwing softballs. Nancy? I don't know. Nancy? She's Nancy. She's always standing there being weird. Imagine Nancy rubbing her weird knuckles together. That's what happens when you vote for Nancy. And then Bloomberg, he's dancing because he makes more money every minute. Let's see how much money Bloomberg's making. So here's the, go the point. I just figured, uh, let's go in here and take a look at these folks, see which one's the worst, and focus on them because they suck and they're jerks or whatever. So um, this is the order I'm putting them in. I think that for the general... Bloomberg is the boss of the jerks. Then you get Biden right now. But I'm going to put I'm putting Clinton above Biden. What are you going to do? That's my chat. So I think Bloomberg's the worst and then Clinton. Oh, wait a minute. We forgot about our friend and also a president of us. What, I didn't even have him in here? It's because I respect him so much. I didn't even want him to be in here. Oh, um, uh, Uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to spell his name. Or Brock? I don't know how to spell his name. Ah! What did I close? Oh, I think I just closed a search. I would have put two R's in there. I don't know shit. So, uh, there we go. Then... Is there any celebrities that are specifically anti-gun being a bunch of jerks? Probably. If you think of them, let us know if there's anybody else. Oh, what am I missing? Miss anything good? Uh, you're saying raising money to be on our side is worse than Bloomberg? I don't know. Uh, absolutely. You just have to start selling out two a my friend. Um, no, I'm telling you, if you want some Bloomberg money, you need to let Bloomberg know that there's an archaic 1934 law that allows people who register a machine gun to own a machine gun. And that law needs to be repealed. And if you had enough Bloomberg money, you could do just that. It also lets people own shelters. That allows just anybody who wants to register to have a, a silencer, which effectively makes a gun a murder weapon by just existing. So you need we need to have that repealed. It's called the NFA. Repeal that NFA. And if you can get Bloomberg to pay for that, you win. It would be like the ultimate uh, move of parkour, political to a parkour. All right, well, let's get back to it. So we're going down the list. Uh, do I need all these bolded? I guess. Really, I'm gonna anyway for consistency. So I'm thinking Bloomberg's the worst. I agree, even though I don't like to. I don't like him. And I think that others are worse in different ways, let's say. But uh, because of his reach or whatever, he's, for, he's worse. Then you got Bill. Then you got Barack. And then you, I shouldn't say, you got Clinton, and you got Obama, and then you got Biden, a whole bunch of jerks in their own way. And I think that's the order I'd put them. Barack might, or Obama might be um, more in power right now, because I think he has got more power right now. He was a better, he was a competent president, and he didn't leave like being tired and worn out. He just left. So he's still got stuff to do, and he's still got. All the, they all get reports every day and they all got hands on wheels and stuff so whatever on hands on controls Clinton probably does but what does he care so I think uh, and we can put Clinton above him because stupid salt weapons man another crap that he did I'm really didn't do nothing except try uh Biden big jerk sucks and uh then you got Feinstein I'm putting her next I don't want to put Jesse Jackson. He's not done anything in a while, but he used to be a jerk. He didn't really do nothing against guns, though. So, in this list, at least, I would probably put Shan Shan a little bit higher. 
but it's not that big a deal. Once you get down to about here, it probably doesn't matter that much. Actually, I'm probably gonna, yeah, whatever. Just to keep these together, I'm gonna leave it like this. But whatever, I have a conversation about this at the gun shop or at the shooting range or someplace. Uh, who you think is the worst uh, anti? All right, so what are we doing here? Anti rights profiteers. And let's take a deeper look now that we have the list and no one out there is disputing it. And the poll seems to back me up. Oh, you know who I forgot? Pelosi again. What the hell? Yeah, now I have Pelosi on here. It's because I respect her so much. Come on. I have to go find her again. This is how boring it is when you're doing stuff on the internet. So I'm going to put Pelosi on top of Einstein. Picture that. Suckers. Uh, and then that's how I'm putting it. Oh, come on. Jason. There she goes. All right. Uh, am I publishing this? Yeah, why not? Let's put it underneath of. Um, is it the industry? No. Is it firearms law? No. Uh, did I just see something here? society somewhere in here I've got the uh, anti-profiteers and I'll put it under them I just gotta find them these things in order There we go. Um, yeah, I would have thought it'd be up here. All right, politicians. So we're not sitting here all day. I'll just put it under politicians. We'll put a template on it so we can find it and use it. And then we'll click publish. And now it exists. So if you want to go look at it, it's where you're watching. This is just watch your website get built. So now we're going to do something with it. So there you can take a look at it. You can look at it from your own uh, perspective out there. But uh, let's go back into editing it and do a quick search on Mikhail Bloomberg. Oh, I'm going to start calling him Mikhail Bloomberg because it sounds more communist. Let's go to the wiki because it knows everything. You don't really need to look at anything more than Wikipedia and know everything about anything. Dude was born in 1942, co-founder of Bloomberg, uh, something LP, whatever that means, longest projectile. Uh, he was the mayor of New York City from 2002 to 2013. He lost the Democrat nomination for president in 2020 against Trump. Bloomberg grew up in Massachusetts and graduated from a university. He began a career at some place named Salmon, named after fish, before forming his own company in 81. This is how you can tell it's garbage, because it should just say graduated from Hopkins in whatever and Harvard Business School in whatever, because they just throw a random date in here. It's useless. Bloomberg spent the next 20 years as chairman of something and blah, 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 the 16th richest person in the world. All right, so we're going to go 16th richest. Come on, man. Uh, boom, this is how you work right off of Wikipedia without even clicking. Just highlight it and go cram it over there. Boom. Then I can go like this and we'll just do a quick little one of these and get rid of that. I, come on, get rid of that. And then get rid of all that bold. Oh, what, what is this all about? Probably nothing. Probably just some bold. All right, so 16 perth richest person, uh, 70 billion dollars. It's like a couple more billion dollars than what I got right now. Uh, but if you want to be a Patreon, you can jump over. There's probably a link somewhere. 
Jump over to Patreon, search for gun websites. Go 20 bucks on, on Patreon. Throw five bucks at us. Throw the rest of it at other projects you think are interesting. And then after a while, take a look and see if that money was worth it. If the money you invested in the creation of stuff like this was better spent than in like, you know, thing of pancakes every month, what's 20 bucks? Go into a restaurant for one person. Uh, not much uh, commodities anymore, but it can certainly create you know, entertaining and informational content. And maybe one day we'll have as much money as Bloomberg. Probably that's exactly how he got rich. And it's probably in here somewhere. It says about how Patreon helped him out. Uh, let's see. So let's get into the part of his political positions. Look how important he is. He's got all this stuff being 16th richest dude. They're going to talk about his wealth and his political career and blah, blah, blah. And let's just do this. Let's go F, control F. And then type in gun. Just see how many. Every town for gun safety. Bloomberg Philanthropies. Beyond coal. Finally, somebody gives a shit about something besides coal. All you ever hear about it anymore is coal, coal, coal. I hate coal and coal miners and the coaling community and the industry and everything that fuels damn coal. I'm with Bloomberg on that. And then he's for every town for gun safety. Uh, was created in 2013 when he decided now I care about safety even though I've been alive since 1942 when did he become super rich let's go to his wealth and find out as mayor with approval ratings oh there's wealth in 2009 Bloomberg's wealth at 16 million so he became mayor in 2002 and he became a billionaire in or no uh he became 11 billion see this is great reporting let's start with 2009 and work our way backwards and subtract how much money he had because if that's how anyone talks and then end it with currently he's worth 59 billion so somehow between 2009 and now he got 59 billion that's handy you probably got it on Patreon. So I'll mention again, if you want to head over to our Patreon, uh, subscribe to what we do, I'd say throw 20 bucks at Patreon every month, throw five at us, and then divvy, divvy that up. Maybe two bucks here, three bucks there, 10 bucks here, and uh, see what your uh, venture capitalism into uh, Second Amendment content creation reaps. See what kind of investment you get. Um, but uh, that's probably how Bloomberg made all that money. But notice how all this stuff about him, and that's what the internet tells us, the Wikipedia that knows all, that's what it's going to tell us about his wealth. Because the rich people are not going to talk about their wealth. Uh, let's see. So in 86, he named it Bloomberg. Uh, revenues approximately $10 billion in 2018. So you go from 1986 to 2018. Here's some detail. He went from zero to 10 billion. There's a detail. Oh, so much detail. Hold on, Wikipedia. Wait, let me make some notes there. Uh, and the new management paid him 10 million. Oh, okay, so somehow he went from 1981, he had 10 million. Then, uh, then he had 10 billion. So that's a pretty good markup. So in 73, he became a general partner at the Salmon Brothers, where he headed something and later. So then in the new management, I thought he built something. Bloomberg having designed in-house computerized financial systems, set up data services. Okay. So that's where he created some, some software that uh, let people do their job of making money better. That's where he made all his money. So by... First called was was released in 1982. Uh, were launched. See, they're still not going to tell us when he made this money. So at some point, he made a bunch of money, and then uh, took a buck salary. Well, that's nice of him because he had billions of dollars. Uh, let's see. Bloomberg turned the city six million dollars, six billion dollar budget deficit into a three billion dollar surplus, largely by raising property taxes. Well, there you go, stupid top property owners. I'll teach you. 
So I'm trying to find stuff about when he made all this money and he started to decide, and now is the time to worry about guns. What's the gap between making a billion dollars and deciding now is the time to care about guns? So I'm going to go to、uh, polit political positions. The next, I just click next on the search for gun in this giant article.、Uh, over his career, blah blah blah. Bloomberg supports gun control measures, abortion rights. Okay, so it's just one of his list of virtue signal causes. Uh, then we get down to his more philanthropy because he's got his political positions, but he's also a rich person, so he's got philanthropy.、Um, we call it donating, but when you're rich, you call it philanthropy.、Uh, so he also every town for gun safety because he cares so much for gun safety that he makes some money on every town. I mean, literally every town pays him. But let's keep going. Just because you have a nonprofit organization and then you create laws that say you have to, the cities and stuff have to give money to nonprofit organizations. That's not necessarily criminal.、Uh, let's keep going. So then, tobacco, guns, and public health. I'm against all of those things except for what's good. Then、uh, we got. Bloomberg has been a longtime donor to global tobacco control efforts. They shouldn't smoke. Those people shouldn't smoke, even in those other countries. Bloomberg has donated close to one billion. That's nice of him. One of his fifty-six of them to promote anti-smoking efforts. He doesn't like smoking. I wonder if he's okay with vaping. He's probably anti-vape. Uh, you notice the new movies out there is against vaping. It's not cool to vape anymore, kids. Don't vape anymore. Get the big plan in the future. All right. So, so it would be interesting to compare his tobacco philanthropies to his gun philanthropies. So let's take a look at that. One billion to promote anti-smoking. Two hundred and fifty. I think that's just breaking it down. Because let's break down how much his philanthropies are of one of his fifty-six billions. Because nobody needs to concern themselves with what one fifty-sixth of a billion, fifty-six billion is, right? So let's just concern ourselves with the one of fifty-six billion he dropped on the ground, so people wouldn't scrutinize the rest of his fifty-six billion, or the fact that he only dropped one. What would he drop two? What would that have accomplished? Would that have ended smoking? He dropped one, though. That's nice of him. And it breaks down to 250 per year. I wonder if he owns an anti-smoking nonprofits and runs them, and then instructs them to exist in the places where he's pressured、uh, politically or、uh, the governments to fund, you know, whatever nonprofit organizations might exist there against smoking. You know how it is.、Um, but you got to make your money somewhere. It's probably off of Patreon. We do Patreon. You could super chat us. We don't have to do nothing. People that got money laying around, you can super chat us. We'll eat with that money.、Um, let's see. So then, let's go to minor tobacco use. Minors with tobacco. It is a lot of people die or whatever if you count all the secondhand smoking to tobacco and not to other things like car,、uh, car exhaust or work conditions or doing weird stuff for. You know, because people are dumb, like eating tight or whatever. You know, they got told that huffing on a vacuum cleaner was good for them or something, and they suck their lungs inside out because it's a cool challenge. And the uh, Chinese uh, diversion applications. Oh,、uh, let's see. And the youth. E oh, he is against e-cigarettes. Stupid vapes. One hundred and sixty million for that. I think this still all adds up to one billion. So he's basically spent one billion against smoking. So I'm going to put one million anti-smoking、uh, right here. He's worth seventy billion. Why did I keep saying fifty-six? Sorry about that. I meant to say he's worth seventy, and he spent one on on smoking. He cares a lot about smoking. He cares about one seventieth on smoking. That's a lot. Uh, let's see what else his his other philanthropies are. Oh, here we go. He's the founder of the gun safety. Well, blah blah blah. Oh, non-communicable diseases. That's an important thing. Also, non-communicable diseases. What is that? Cancer. 
So you get stuff you can't pass to somebody else, I guess. Super important. I'm sure he put a lot of his money into that, but let's not tell us. All right, he doesn't tell us about every town either. So I guess we're going to go to every town in the new window. Created in 2013. So I guess... I'm going to highlight these and put the little thingies and then I didn't really want it like that so do I yeah I'll leave it like this why not so then I just have to do that and then I'll go 2013 so we created every town when mayors against illegal guns. So you notice how they say in 213 he created this with these other things. So I think he also created those other things. Or am I crazy? Was formed in April 2006 when Bloomberg. So 2006, you get mayors against illegal gun guns. Come on. Don't make me think that. I'm not typing all that. Meg. That's a great thing. All right. And then 15 mayors in April. Meg merged with Mom's Demand Action to form every town. So we don't know when Mom's Demand comes into all this. Notice how they don't click to Mom's Demand. I guess they already did once. Nope. So I guess they just go, oh, it was formed. Don't worry about it. So is there any, any, any scrutiny on it at all? Something like how much it costs to set it up and if it was uh, pushed on anybody or if it was asked for? Nope, just a bunch of their accomplishments, quote unquote, their advisory board, quote unquote, consists of more than a thousand mayors, oh, a thousand current and former mayors. So, hey, I still want to be in current. I still want to be in focus. So can I be in there too? Even though I was a mayor for like 15 minutes one time? Sure, because we need to get that number up. There's one question there. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess we do know that Moms Who Demand was created in 2012. What is this? Oh, I see. Every town is supposedly Meg. It's the dumbest name ever. Uh, Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. So that's the old logo before they were acquired by Everytown. They keep saying it was founded by this lady who worked for Monsanto. So let's open her up and take a look at Shan Chan. In Indianapolis and began as a grassroots Facebook group called I Want to Get a Bunch of Bloomberg Money and he told me to start this group. And then by the end of that year, that group had grown into a group with over 130,000 members. Oh my goodness, you can almost do that with about, I don't know, $4,000 back then, uh, probably. Uh, not that I know people who went on Facebook and bought 100,000 subscribers and then gave away stuff and then parlayed that in and told me how much it cost so that they could factor it to grow. But whatever, There's, they probably did it legitimately because it's real grassroots. Um, the group has cited examples of MAD as a model. That's interesting. I've used MAD in the past and get people yell at me about it, so I don't know enough about MAD. Yeah, so that's pretty weak. They're suggesting that Chan Chan was like, 
you know what? I've been working for Monsanto, but I'm going to start baking bread for a living. I'm just going to be a single mom, or I mean, whatever is most appropriate mom. And I'm just going to hang out and care about children. <gasps> Something horrible happened, and I care more about the implement than any of the other circumstances or mitigating factors or parameters from things that created the situation. So what I'm going to do is persecute everybody who owns the same kind of property, just because I'm not misguided, but because I've done a lot of research as a you know part-time lady who doesn't work for Monsanto anymore. And although, sure, I've got a lot of skills in manipulating people and marketing, learning how to uh, use mammals, uh, you know, ways that uh, you would herd sheep or uh, livestock, you know, that's no big deal. I'm just going to use those skills for what I care about passionately. And I happen to get paid by the 16th wealthiest person on the planet to do it. No big deal. Let's not question that. But let's uh, also put nothing on the internet here. The most important place, the encyclopedia of the internet. Let's put nothing in there about that little situation. So Shan Shan was like, I care. I'm going to just do something, whatever I can possibly do here in Indiana on Facebook. Oh, Bloomberg found me. What do you know? And now I've got some amount of money that I won't disclose, even here on the internet. And then a couple of years later, we got absorbed by a bigger corporation. Not because we weren't doing our job well, but because other reasons. Um, oh, good. An ad campaign launched by the group compared laws concerning guns that they call assault weapons with laws that have successfully banned other things like the Kinder Surprise chocolates, certain books, wink, wink, and dodgeball, all of which are mean and dangerous, and we don't like them. In 2013, moms demanded that they had merged with mayors because not because they weren't doing their job good or because it was more economically feasible to work it as one group but other reasons uh, and then they have four million members so they're one million members shy of being as large as the NRA but the NRA is mean and they have more power because of their members are more powerful push them I don't know. that doesn't matter but the moms are persecuted in 18, the aftermath launched a campaign, students demand, oh, now we got students demand. I forgot about that one. So who runs students demand? Oh, it's an every town student wing. So it's not that ever anyone started it, but someone exploited. So let's put that under uh, 2018. Shan Shan wasn't doing her job good, and there was a new thing to exploit. So we got students demand. And I don't know where they came up with that one. SDAGs, stages. They don't even bother to put initials on that one. Stages. Is it a square or something? It's probably a slur or a swear. Because they wouldn't have engineered it to be weird. Uh, let's see. Over 200 groups have been added since 2018. Then they got their... Oh, the NRA got the ILA member when they started winning back in 2009. And stated that Mayors is not only concerned with illegal guns, but is actually anti-gun. What? doesn't make any sense because mayors is just worried about illegal guns not all guns they even said they're okay with hunting uh, courage members spokesman let's see however said there's not gonna give us anything here controversy garbage so it's weird but wikipedia didn't have too much to add there so somehow bloomberg works for a company creates some software richest person in the world 70 billion we still don't know how much Bloomberg gives to gun control. So let's go like this. Bloomberg gives to gun control. I think I've seen that one time. So that's why I'm looking it up. Because they made a big deal about it at one point. 
how Bloomberg bought the gun control movement. What? This is from 2020, so that's almost recent. That's about a year old. Sign up for, oh, I give a care about that. 20, blah, 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 do, 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 do. Bloomberg said, what did he do? Do, do, Bloomberg's platform. Bloomberg elevated himself, overriding something to understand Bloomberg. Didn't like it much. Blah, 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 blah. 2000, tough on crime had entered office that must be when he went into new york mayor or whatever um according to every town successor group bloomberg stem come on you're gonna talk about money ever this thing is called he buys himself the second amendment and hasn't even brought up money yet it's rhetoric exactly the weaponized Republican states' rights rhetoric. You stupid states. You rhetoric. Here we go. Bloomberg had poured nearly three million of his own money into the cause. Oh my goodness! A seventy billionaire spent over three million. Okay, so this says that in August of two thousand and nine, blah blah blah. Bloomberg and his team. Oh, okay, so this was just this was just one campaign. That's nothing for him. So Bloomberg gave every town for gun safety more than ten million in seventeen alone. Think about that. Ten million of his seventy billion. Wow, he's really putting it all in. Like if he was sitting at a poker table, he's like all in. Wow. 10 million in 2017. Let's not forget that he has sunk 270 million into the movement. That seems interesting. And that was in 2020. So if this person who cares so much to write a thing about Bloomberg either sucks at being a reporter or is good at it and did research, come on. And then you go down here to the part I highlighted. I find this kind of stuff interesting. That seems like the only real kernel of thing. A bunch of it was opinion and whatnot. Come on. It's not highlighted anymore. Dang it. Probably because I clicked that other thing. All right. So he did a 500. Oh, that's interesting. So $500 million presidential campaign. Let's see if Mother Jones will let me work this. Can I just plain work it, Mother Earth? Mother Earth? Thank you. So what year was that, 2020? 2020. Oh, I should probably not have entered. I should have alt. So if you enter, it makes another bullet point. I don't want a bullet point. So I'm gonna go back and do shift enter, and I just get a carriage return without trigger in the bullet point whatever that's supposed to be called all right so i'll also put a little thingy in here a little minus sign so that it doesn't uh look all smooshed together all right every town reveals the limits of bloomberg's abilities past 15 years bloomberg has wrapped up many political wins no oh, whatever name a political win name it name one all right so Where did I find that number before? Whatever that number was, that 500, set 270 million of his own money. There we go. Into the movement. So let's go here and say somewhere around 2020. Oh, I did it again. So let's undo that. Shift enter. Say somewhere around 2020, because we will believe this Mother Earth Jones, whatever the hell it's called motherjones.com article um gonna, come on let's just unlink that 270 million into the movement uh into the anti-gun so does that scare you that a guy with 70 billion dollars let's talk about this again you have any idea how 70 billion works it's not a million it's 700 millions 
So not a hundred million, that would be one billion. Seventy hundred billions, millions of cities. Seventy hundred millions, and he spent two hundred and seventy of them. So he's got seventy hundreds. He spent point. Wait, he's got seventy hundreds, and he spent. Yeah, two hundred of them. Two of them. No, seventy hundreds. He spent two. So he spent two out of his seventy on. No, what am I saying? Yeah, yeah, two out of his. Yeah, yeah. So he's got seventy hundred millions. And he spent two of them. Now I'm getting it. it. Took me a minute to put the numbers into picture so that my brain can figure it out, and now I got it. So he spent five of them on running for president. So he cared twice as much about running for president as he cares about guns at all times. What if he wanted to lean into guns? How much would he spend? What if he spent ten? Of his seventy instead of two, then he would spend one billion on guns, right? So I'm just putting it in perspective,、um, and I'm going to quit worrying about Bloomberg because that gives us a scale on Bloomberg. I don't know how long we're going to run this. Is an hour already? Am I corking anybody? Is there anything actually happening right now? Let's go find out. Oh, we got a poll going. Twenty-two votes. People still think Bloomberg is the worst. Interesting. People would think Bloomberg is the worst for one hundred, Alex. My、uh, internet must be slowing down. So, Black and Loaded is over there playing the video games. They're kids. You gotta let them play their video games. And then、uh, looks like. Uh, AR guns is going live with Echo or for Echo. Did I post a video? It looks like people are commenting on something. I'm gonna keep going.、Um, I'm gonna go check on a print though, and、uh, let y'all listen to some groovy elevator music. Imagine you're in an elevator with Michael Bloomberg, and he just dropped forty million dollars in cash on the ground. Do you tap him on the shoulder and say, "Excuse me, sir"? You drop forty million dollars on the ground, or what do you do? So we're getting a start on this, but I think we'll go maybe. We'll see how fast some of this other stuff shows up. All right, so I'm gonna go back. Let's look at this guy. See, this isn't going to tell us、uh, much about them. So we'll go back and just look for what other stuff shows up. Biography. This is new. Complaining about the JR15. If I mute it, you still hear the elevator music, right?
What? What a crazy way to complain about things. Wow, that's crazy. Instead of doing news, they're just complaining about something that's from 1980s, from what I understand. Um, oh, okay. No wonder. Oh, that's amazing. So this guy is the guy who's putting out that narrative. No wonder it's messed up. That is crazy. I wonder why. I bet you. So here's what we're looking at here. I'm looking to see who this guy is and if it's going to tell us something about how much money he's got, how much he's getting paid, let's say. And uh, all you find is his news stories or whatever. So this is the guy complaining about the new um, university. The, there used to be a uniform crime reporting system, a uniform crime report. And that was started in the 30s, from what I understand. And all law enforcement that felt like it would report to the FBI said the FBI, a national level police effectively, could help monitor interstate and other potential crime waves or tendencies or that kind of thing. Uh, it could help with logistics and whatever. You know, the idea that you might expect, you know, the good parts of having a federal level organization involved in fighting crime that was in the 30s before radio for the most part there was telegraph i suppose but there was no uh internet for sure and no uh there was no mail and that was about it so people would write stuff on paper and somehow get it on paper to the national and if everything was good it would get in there and then start searching it you know some kind of a system would let you tag the, the crimes with something and that's what it's all about. They would tag the crimes with the organizational system so that they could be used in the future. The data could be found effectively and used either to keep uh, one criminal's crimes together without knowing who the criminal is. You know, like these are the, the pieces of evidence or these are the styles of the crime. I don't know all the terms, but, you know, this is the things that uh, characteristics of a crime, maybe. And they, they kept track of some things for whatever reasons and they could do this with the technology and the insight that they had in the 30s and it wasn't from what i understand until the 1980s that a better system had come up because computers came around and they said hey we should do something with these computers now that we got them and uh then you had some effort to do a new criminal or crime reporting thing and then not all country company not all jurisdictions complied with that or wanted to, to be part of that I understand this year or last year maybe somewhere around now there's a mandatory compliance with the system from the 80s and that's what this news story is about i suspect it says um they're trying to suggest that um this information that gathers in this real world that reveals types of weapons victimization tells us what the relationship of these attacks so I think he thinks that uh, he's going to see more data on crime and then it won't justify their fear mongering. It won't be able, you can't fear monger when people are no longer afraid. When the, when the uniform crime reporting is done in such a way that it can be verifiable from the criminal aspect, the consequences and actual circumstances with guns, in the world in 2020 or whatever day we're, year we're talking probably 2020 because these things take a while to show up in forms but whatever 2021 2022 right they're going to be real hard for them to say that you should be worried in your home when all the crime is over here due to laws that create property or uh you know people's uh, habits or people's actions have become criminal and underground markets and jurisdiction or claiming territory and all the stuff that comes along with the black market you know let's let's once they show that that's the sources more distinctly or more accurately i suspect these people that are using the uh, the, the, un, the people that are unaware of this they're using that 
that divide that rift, they're going to not like it when the new system comes along. So what it sounds like they're trying to say is that the new system is going to get agencies to stop reporting crime data completely, which makes it sound like there's a voluntary compliance. And it also makes it sound like people are going to say, no, nah, we'd rather not participate in a thing. And I suspect it'll be more of people will be not able to pay for it potentially. But I think uh, this is making a bunch of do about nothing or making a mountain out of a molehill, that kind of thing. Of course, I haven't listened to it yet, so I'm not sure it's possible that that Violence Policy Center is on our side. And this is uh, a complicated issue, but it, on first glance, it looks like they're trying to obfuscate the situation in order to keep crime, uniform crime data foggy so that they can continue to exploit that rift or that, you know, just unawareness. Well, let's see. Is the executive director prior was a PESS office in the National Office of Amnesty International? Oh, that's interesting. Let's put that in there. People are going to love that. Um, oh, and he was also the director of the National. Let's open this up. What's all this about? That's, we're getting a bunch of stuff from this guy in this one. So we're talking about Josh Sugarman, who now is working with Violence Policy Center. He's the executive director and founder of the violence prior to founding the VPC. Oh, he founded the violence. So he founded. That sounds like he cares so much. He decided to learn something new and found an organization, even though it's something he's not familiar with. So prior to that, he was a press officer for the National Office of Amnesty International. Wow. So he was like, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and work on press for an organization that's interested in keeping a bunch of kids ignorant of international affairs so that we can scam money off of them. Or maybe they really care about things and they're just that bad at it for decades. Uh, and the communication director for the National coalition to ban handguns well again he was out of his comfort zone he wasn't sure what handguns were so they decided to work for this organization he was the communications director it's not a big deal just somebody who deals with all of their communications and marketing and whatnot oh uh, let's see that's interesting so that's that guy does he have any famous quotes Assault weapons, menacing looks coupled with the public's confusion over fully automatic machine guns versus some automatic assault weapons. Anything that looks like a machine gun is assumed to be a machine gun can only increase the chance of public support for restrictions of these weapons. Nice. That's a nice way to complicated way of saying that you're going to screw people over by keeping them ignorant. And then he also has one here called handguns are a public health problem. Nice. The most unfortunate aspect of this is that these guns are purchased for self-defense, but are far more likely to be used against the purchaser or that person's friends and family. Far more likely would imply that often that's the case. And instead, it's not the case. And it hardly ever happens. And the rates go down on those kind of things, those kind of incidents. But whatever, so this guy's a bunch of lying. He says lying things and he's a liar. Uh, but uh, Net Roots Nation, Executive Director, fear as well as every handgun is aimed at you. Nice. Founder, nonprofit, 1998. He's the executive. 1988. How old is this guy? Eh. So it'd be interesting to find out who pays the Violence Policy Center. So let's go find out how much the Violence Policy Center makes. Is it a nonprofit? Uh, what's that thing? I forgot what that place is called. Form. Projectspublica.org organizations. Is this the place? Oh, look at that. I think I found a place. 
I don't need to know when it's updated, but thanks anyway. So violence policy place uh, in 2019, $1 million. $1 million. That's probably a lot of money spent to, you know, help people out and to uh, you know, stop violence or whatever. What was that, 2019? Let's put down $1 million. Oops, okay. So when that happens, you got weird formatting. I could do other things. Wait, can I right click and do something? No. So I'm going to just go over here, drop it into there, paste it and grab it because that's faster than doing other stuff. Boom, $1 million. And if you look at this, uh, compensation, Josh grabbed a cool 152. I make approximately less than that. Way, 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 way less than that. So Josh's compensation in 2019 can be copied. Hey, come on. I'm not going to copy and paste. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to straight up pork right off of the freaking internet. Right here, boom. And then corked. I don't know about you what happens. Is it come over the heart bit? Right. And then uh, salary. How do you spell salary? I don't, even, I don't even get paid enough to know how to spell salary. I'm going to let the robot do it for me. There you go. Salary in, let's say, 2019, because that's the forum we're looking at. Bam. So if you want to be super nosy, you could go backwards into 2018 and 2017 and even 2016 and 15 and 14 and 13. Still making a cool million bucks in 2013. Looks like he sucked on something and lost 200,000 bucks because of why? Grassroots activism prevented Obama's 23 executive actions in 2013. And Josh Sugarman took a $200,000 bite. But he doesn't care because he then quickly went back to 800 and then 800 and then a million too. They're like, hey, so I remember how we didn't pay you 2 million? Let's give that all back to you right there. And then a little bit more on top of it, which is, oh, let's give you a little bit, tiny less this year. Does that get your blood, blood boiling? That's just one organization that's making a million bucks. You think that a million bucks is coming from individuals or is it coming from the Bloomberg money? The Blo Let's not forget about the Bloomberg. 270 million, is this one million of them? Or wait, this would be one million over the course of how many years? It can't be the Bloomberg. Mathematically doesn't make sense because this place was invented in 2000 and, uh, 1988. We know that, and it's been making a million bucks since at least 2010. So what are we saying here? That's uh, 6 million of Bloomberg's 270. Is it possible? You be the judge. Go research it and tell me. All right, that was violence policy and a little bit of Josh Sugarman. Richard didn't even know about that guy. That's what we're doing here. Nobody's super chatting me. I won't get no 152,000 doing this, but at least we'll dig into the people exploiting us. All right, next up is Pelosi. Everybody likes Pelosi. She's pretty cool, trustworthy, friendly, approachable, jolly. Born in 1940, so, you know, before World War II, no big deal. Um... Trying to grab drink over here. First woman to lead a party in Congress. Nice. She's just responsible. An adderum of bull. We're going to see how much money she makes? Come on. Come on. Just tell us a little bit about how much money she's got. We're just looking about how much money she makes. We know she's a good lady. Uh, you're going to talk about how much money you got there, lady? Come on, economic? No, that's everybody else's money. How about your money? Come on, really? Personal life, financial status. She's such, she's so important. Let's go down to her financial status. The nonpartisan open secrets. Let's go over and check that out while we're looking, because this is exactly what we're looking for over here. Uh, open secrets estimated in 2009 because current because it's 2022 and on the internet you can't really ask for any more current than whatever the hell that is 13 years ago good good wikipedia i'm glad you're not biased and giving us good relevant 13 year old info her net worth was 58 million back then so let's not worry about that oh here we go 
as of 2021 oh here we go so that i guess maybe they're giving us a little insight so even though she's been in office look how important she is all these things that she's done they're so good she's been in office when philip burden died in 1983 uh and then somebody else happened. She picked Pelosi as her designated successor. And then in 87, Pelosi won special election. So since 1987, Pelosi was like, yeah, I'll take over and move this country. Uh, and then she was probably not super rich then, or maybe she was. But then it sounds like in 2009, she was worth $58 because she deserves it ranking her 13th among the 25th wealthiest members of Congress. In 14, she had doubled that. Oh, that's interesting. So now I'll quit bitching. They're giving us a snapshot of her incremental growth. She works hard at what she does and she invests wisely. Not with secrets or anything like that. It's just smart. That's how. That's why she's elected so much because of how smart she is. Put it, put it, doing marketing 101 baking their eight That's, she's super good and then 12 made her the 13th richest member of congress she goes up and down she's all the time going up and down closey earnings connecting their heavy investments in apple disney and stuff you know the stuff that stayed open during things so don't worry roll call what roll call According to Roll Call, that dude is the guy feeding us all this information about Pelosi. You can watch Roll Call on Wednesday nights, uh, the uh, rants and raves. He's also often a host with uh, Night Strike on uh, Hit or Miss on Tuesdays. Uh, let's see. But it looks like according to that dude, Roll Call, uh, her husband holds properties worth... 14.65 million, including the vineyard. Nice. Um, as a 21, no big deal. She was valued at 121 million. Nice. So why don't we go up to Nancy? Give her a little dot thingy. And then little thing. Shift enter. And a minus sign. And we'll just casually drop 121 million. Right on her little doorstep right there. We'll unbold it because we don't want to get it mad or anything. She's, got a, she's 121 million here. I know loud. She's the sixth richest person in Congress. Isn't that woke of them to say person? Because I'm not a biologist. There we go. Boom. And then right there. There you go, Pelosi. Oh. According to journalist Glenn, somebody, Pelosi's have traded $33 million worth of tech stocks over the past two years. So it's none of our business, really. Come on. Being that important and rich, it's for business. Oh, let's see. This was done while she was working. Come on. Let's not get into the dirty stuff about what antitrust legislation uh, she was supposed to be working on. Come on. Let's not worry about that. But instead, let's just think about how she's got $120 million. And she started out in 2009 at $58 million, But she deserved it. Because of the work and the hard dedication to effort that she she's uh, setting the example or whatever. Here's Nancy Pelosi Drive. You could go take a drive up there. Because Mikey could probably drive. All right, who's next? I said I was going to go for the 15 minutes. I think it's been 15 minutes. So let's see what time it is. I'm looking at the clock on how long I've been going, not what time it actually is. I think it's way later than I expected to go. So this was pretty interesting. I suspected it would be kind of interesting. Again, this isn't really urgent or necessary even. But now there's a page on the website where this stuff will exist. Some other time in the future, maybe when I get a bunch of Bloomberg money, when I get maybe $58 billion, then I'll spend some more time on this. I didn't get one super chat. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I'm not going to get anywhere near the level of wealth just doing this kind of stuff for a living. So I'll have to go figure out something else. Maybe once we research Clinton, Obama, Biden, Feinstein, Jesse Jackson, Sheila Jackson Lee, Ellen McCarthy, Shannon Watts. We just still don't know what Shannon Watts makes. I'd be curious. And so forth. 
maybe we'll get a better idea how to make some money. And maybe it won't be by exploiting or scaring or terrorizing or infringing. Maybe it'll be some other cool one. All right, so this is pretty boring probably, but it's that's what it's like when you're not trying to, uh, uh, not really trying nothing. I'm just trying to uh, throw some stuff out there. Using the internet a little bit, and uh, let's see. Can anyone tell me why Bloomberg hates guns so much? Did his mom and dad something get killed? That's an interesting one. That's super interesting. He knows a lot better than us, so it's maybe just concern for his fellow. Uh, but it could be something else. You're right. I don't know if I've ever, I've never listened to an interview that wasn't him making a dumb, likely mark because I don't listen to his interviews. That's a great question, really. Um, that would be the kind of question that it would be interesting to have a conversation. If you needed to have a conversation with somebody on the other side of the fence, what would you have that conversation about? That might be one of the icebreakers. That might be something you could start a conversation with somebody on the other side of the fence. Um, I would say literally about Bloomberg. Like, hey, do you know about Bloomberg and why he's anti-rights? Why he thinks our property is somehow to blame for all the ills that happen that have anything to do with other people's property? And then, uh, or, you know, some other way saying that. And then uh, listen to what they think. And maybe they know. That would be interesting. But uh, if they don't know, uh, I'm wondering what they lay on him. Like, oh, he probably just cares. Or like, oh, he probably did have a tragedy. You know, that might be interesting to find out. So, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, Pelosi was born in Maryland. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully that doesn't affect other people in Maryland. Oh, there's Pat, Pat Hirsch out there. Um, what happened? Oh, got uh, Makojo's. Talking about Makojo's back. Right on. Uh, Woods is out there also. And I don't know if this was useful. Let me know. Like I say, I'm not going to spend too much time on these things. These were part of a bigger project. You know, one of the pages, one of the sections of the website was empty because I don't really care about this stuff too much. But sometimes it can be useful in conversation. Sometimes it can be useful in a uh, um, when trying to. Uh, change someone's mind or understand what they're all about which is probably more important than trying to change their mind it's a whole other discussion i'm going to take the results of the poll here and the poll overwhelmingly bloomberg he's got a lot of money whenever i do stuff like this and dig into how much money that dude's got it makes me wonder what would happen if he really cared like if he really laid into it that'd be a whole other world he's throwing two of his 70 at us and we're talking two of 70 lifetimes worth of money multiple lifetimes he has 700 um, no he has 70 hundred millions and he threw two of them at guns maybe three of them at guns what happens when he throws 40 of them at guns and still has 40 hundred lifetimes worth of money left behind he could he could create legacy who knows what if he just bought every gun off of everybody? He buys gun broker and just starts buying every gun. Then what happens? Are you scared yet? Keep your guns. Don't sell them. All right. Well, with that, I'll end it. That was your horror story for the end of the show. Nobody saying anything, so I'm really glad. Of. But that was a good ending comment. Good one. And we'll end it with uh, some of our uh, stuff from the group of them. Stream what? Our stream yard. So we can uh, do stuff in here. I always recommend people get up and walk around, do stuff, right? Eat something healthy before you sit back down and watch more stuff. But when you do watch more stuff um, from us, you can thank the folks that make it possible for us to be here. Our Patreons, they subscribe to what we do. A bunch of them are making it possible for the band, band to stay on the road and get us to places once in a while. Not as often as we used to, but as we keep slaying some of these bills, we'll get into a better position to travel again. The Daily Gun Show is back uh, and starting off. Speaking of things coming back and getting better. So thanks to the folks that are supporting the Daily Gun Show. We've got a bunch of two-way history projects. Some of them we looked at today with the Minuteman University and things like this. Just spending some time on different facets of addressing this uh, complicated big issue from different angles uh folks all throw in basically the cost of a lunch i think that's 12 bucks throwing 12 bucks at us each month is that 60 bucks no it's more than that. that would be uh 
hundred and something a year. I can't do the math right now. Bunch of money each year. Um, we appreciate that. That lets us keep servers running, software going. Uh, lets us have subscriptions to like uh, Adobe. Uh, then we've got the, the cup of coffee crew. So this is something like five bucks a month. So that's definitely 60 bucks a year. This is the one I recommend for folks that are independently wealthy or really interested in what we're putting out there. Uh, take 20 bucks, throw it at Patreon, throw five bucks a bit at us, and then take the rest of that and check out the people we support. Check out other folks who you've heard say that we have a Patreon and see what happens when you are the investor in the content. It's like having Shark Tank, except you're the investor. And you might not feel like it, but I can tell you from being the recipient of it, I'm able to spend more and more time, thanks to our Patreons, on projects like this one, which would never be economically viable if I was trying to get you to buy something, right? I'm just trying to get Second Amendment awareness out there and interesting in new ways, and these are the folks that make it possible. And then lastly, everybody else who's like a buck or two, or some people are more than that, but the people that don't necessarily have a level, but also contribute this all together pays a bill each month so you know like to throw their name up on there acknowledge them and uh, say thanks and again if you're interested in supporting people uh, like myself over there check out our patreon page it'll have some, a list to others who are over there and patreon is a it's our blog it's a it's a social platform a lot of people put just stuff for just patreons i don't really do that uh, but I like using Patreon because it's more interesting looking than YouTube. YouTube is very boring. It doesn't even let us put bold or anything. It lets us put links. That's it. So on Patreon, I can put pictures and images and do more, you know, more like a real blog. Uh, and then lastly, we've got the calendar here for the rest of the month. Uh, we had Wanamaker last, excuse me, last weekend. iGold is happening right now. No, yesterday. Sorry, iGold happened yes yesterday. There's a I got to look up. There's a bear arms and Bitcoin, uh, which is a gun and tech kind of Comic Con type of situation this weekend in Miami. The Latin Little Latinos are going to that. And then uh, there's some kind of a freedom rally in Sarasota, Florida this month as well on the 16th. Those are the items I know that are in the calendar. If I'm missing something, let me know. There's a bunch of stuff coming up in May, like Shuta up in Utah. The, uh, no other choice train and learn event in Missouri uh, and then the NRA is working that weekend and move their national meeting to Memorial Day weekend and uh, thanks again to everybody that showed up live and is part of this uh, kind of boring it's not really a lecture series just a effort in Second Amendment awareness if you've had a insight into the stuff we were talking about today it's not my passion or nothing but if you want to leave um, insight into the comments feel free uh, whenever we do this again at some point in the future i'll grab the comment anything that was thrown in there that's useful into the website and into you know, further efforts under this project big project it'll take a long time to finish it's not about finishing first it's just about uh you know, being as, making as big a splash as we can while we're, we're uh, able so with that, thanks for showing up. We'll put a couple of things here and see you next time. Gearwebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is free patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at Gearwebsites.com. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, Check out our Patreon channel. The guys and gals at gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thank you for watching gunwebsites.com. Do, 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 do.